I've got a real treat for this video. Uh, that isn't necessarily a real treat for you, uh, it's a real treat for me. I'm gonna do an unboxing from Todd Cutler. So, uh, Todd Cutler uh, has really good YouTube presence. I, I recommend checking his stuff out. I think it's Todd's Workshop. Uh, but he also has Todd Cutler as his custom line, and uh, he's a really nice guy. I got to meet him last year, which was a bit of a treat. So I just received a parcel from him. I ordered some stuff during his uh, Black Friday sale. Uh, he's based in England, uh, and presently so am I, so shipping was cheap. Um, but I know he ships to the U.S. The first bit of his work I saw was a custom hunting crossbow he made that was just beautiful, breathtaking. So I've always wanted some of this stuff. Uh, just to set expectations, this is all from his Todd Cutler line, sorry, Todd's workshop line, which is the sort of um, the, the less custom uh, and slightly lower price stuff, but I still am super excited. I think it's gonna be really great. So box arrived like this, it's got a nice little sticker on the end. I went ahead and took the staples out to make this a little easier so I don't have to see here with tools, but it's really well packaged. And let's see what we have padding paper. It's really quite packed in there. I'm very excited. I know what's in here. I think I do. Some of the stuff was back ordered, so I don't know exactly what's going to be in here, but let's have a look. I'm very excited. I wasn't necessarily expecting things to be so neatly wrapped, so uh, I would be surprised if there was any damage. And I will probably try to save this for wrapping Christmas presents or something. Oh. I think I know what this is. You know what, I'm going to come back to this one. I promise, I'm saving this one for last. I'm just taking a guess at what that is. Ah, let's see. Oh, see, not everything has to be about murdering people. It can be, but this is something I was really excited to, uh, when I saw it on his site. In some of the recreation groups, we do a lot of medieval feasts. And when you do a medieval feast, you want to, you know, you bring your own place settings, your own place and stuff. And there's usually, you know, good light and things like that provided, but fancying up your immediate table area is a really cool way to sort of add some ambiance. And this is a recreation of a collapsing candlestick holder. So you put that on your little feast table. You can hold a tall candlestick, a taper, or I think a fat candlestick. So you can spike something, you can sit it in there, or you can grab a taper. It sits on your table and then it folds up uh, and fits in your box. It's very pretty. Look at that detail on it. It's pretty nice. Actually, Todd does this in his video, so I'll assume that's the better way to do it. Very cool. Uh, this one is a little, no, it was just a trick of the eye. I thought for a second it was bent. It's not. So there we go. Candlestick holder. Oh, something in... Oh! It says free knife. I was not expecting a free knife. That's why it's yellow. Oh my goodness. Now I'm really excited. Ooh. Ooh, it comes in, a, in its own sheath. The sheath is hand-tooled, look at that. Uh, Todd's got some really good um, videos about how people would tool their own sheaths and sort of convinced me to be a little less scared to go ahead and just do it myself. He sort of described it as the sort of thing you might do when you're bored at the inn or whatever. You might just go to carving a simple geometric pattern. I think it looks so nice. Let's see. Of course, be careful when unwrapping knives, no matter how excited you are. Ooh, look at that. That is so cool. I don't know what the material on the hand, sorry, I'm looking at it instead of showing it off. <laughs> I don't know what the material of the handle is. And perhaps bone, maybe wood? I'm not really good at figuring that out. It's quite sturdy. It's a nice thick spine on it. And ready to be sharpened. Probably a good idea not to send people sharp knives in the UK without them specifically asking for it. That is awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, if you ever see this. That's beautiful. That's going to be very handy. Thank you. All right. Jeez. 
pull something else out here. Out of the tube of wonder. Oh, I think I know what this is. I've been looking forward to this also a night. Oh, baby. I haven't had a good dagger for any of my outfits. And I, I do sort of a variety of different reproductions. So I wanted something that was a little bit distinctive, but would also be appropriate for a number of different outfits from different times and places in history. And I should be careful because I requested this sharp, even wrapped in plastic. I don't want to accidentally cut myself on video. Oh yeah. That is a really cool dagger. So the handle, I think is really neat. It's actually a little bit smaller, it fits nicely in the hand, and I didn't realize that there was a little bit of brass inside these ornamental details, which I really dig. It's got a diamond cross section. So if I remember correctly, this is appropriate for like 11th to late 14th century. I would check his website, I don't quite recall. So this is not like a, like a super fancy nobleman's type dagger, but I think it's fancy enough for me. It's got, it comes with a nice tooled sheath, all in leather. It's even tooled on the back a little bit with a nice brass shape on it. Very nice. Yeah, I think that's going to be really nice. I went with natural so I could choose the color or I could even do more carving on it myself if I wish. I, I believe this is going to be a veg tan leather and because it's not already dyed, it should take to any further carving quite well, but these are really nice details. It fits really nicely in that sheath as well. I would recommend you get one, but I want to be the only person around with one, so definitely don't. Let's see what else is in here. There's another. Boy, howdy, that's a big boy. We'll get to that next. I think I know what this is. This one's in a little Christmas bag. Might be what British people would call bits and bobs. Let's see what we have. Excellent. I've been wanting one of these for a long time, ever since I was a kid. Uh, and Todd has an excellent video on these. This is a sling. So he's got a video on how to use them. The cord is kind of waxed, or maybe, yeah, beeswaxed? It feels kind of neat. It's not what I expected. It would just be sort of regular twine. I was like, well, is it really worth uh, getting someone to make you a sling when you could make it yourself? But when I look at this, that cord would be pretty difficult for me to reproduce. The, the way that the knot is woven back on itself in the loop is actually quite nice. I don't know that I would have noticed that before. And it looks like there's even slits in the pouch. I don't know if that helps air pass through it or not, or if that's just a cool little detail. So I'll have to go out and find some stones and maybe like a really tall person to volunteer to be a target. So there's a sling. Yeah, it feels neat. It's sort of like, almost feels rubbery, but obviously it's not rubber. There we go, handy little pocket sling in case you need to take down any birds or anything like that for dinner. You know, I've been wanting one of these for a long time. Uh, when I used to shoot, I never hit my wrist, but anytime I swap to a longbow or anything with a shorter uh, riser height, um, I would then, like with a recurve, I wouldn't catch my wrist, but with a longbow or a selfbow, I tend to. So, and the price on this was just so great, given how beautiful that buckle is. You know, I think, I don't recall, check the website. I think it was 15 pounds. And again, I can tool this myself. So I was like, you know what? Even if I do one day want to make my own just custom for me to say that I made it, you know, starting with something like this, uh, uh, you know, it's nicely stitched, gives me a place to draw some inspiration from. I saw plenty of evidence of these in museums. I even saw one in the British Museum myself, not that different than this. I mean, this is very quickly stamped and tooled, but um, I remember seeing lots of examples, even from the Mary Rose, that look pretty similar to this. This one's actually pretty big, so it should be pretty safe. Yeah, I'll give it a try. And it's uh, multiple layers in here. I don't think it's hardened, but because maybe these two pieces are glued to each other. It's hard to say with the third one in the middle, but it's quite stiff. So I'm sure it'll be more than enough to take the sting out. 
Okay, moving on. Ah, uh, yes. I won't bother pulling these out, but these are brass purse hangers. I'm making a belt, you see. So that's a brass purse hanger. This is another one. Uh, this might be for hanging a small purse, and this would distribute the weight across multiple spots in the belt. Um, obviously, they're pretty matchy, so appropriate for a wide variety of recreations. So that will help me make a belt that can do it all, is my intention. Uh, come back to that. I know what that is. And this is another thing I've been waiting for. Ever since my sword belt what was nothing but tied around the scabbard slipped and my sword almost came out and I cut myself grabbing it to stop it from skittering across the floor, I'm wanting to make a better sword belt. So this is a sword belt hanger kit. Uh, this is a long sword hanger kit. I think it is 15th century. Um, but it's got a couple buckles. It's got this distributor for, or this is the hook for the back so you can remove the straps yourself. And then this is a slider for sliding up and down the belt. It looks quite nice. I don't know if you can see through the plastic. It's nice that he included some uh, copper rivets for it as well. And there's a belt strap end. So I will put that on my own leather. I will add these bad boys to hang a purse from. And I should have a pretty good sword belt. That I can take the sword off. All right. This is a uh, steel striker or flint. I think this is the steel part. Yeah. So I've never actually done this. Uh, I think once again, Todd's got videos on how to do this for uh, to actually uh, strike steel and flint together. But I thought that was pretty great. And at the price, I couldn't complain. It looks quite nice and something to keep in your pouch. That's it for, is that it for the little goodie bag? Yeah, that's it for the little goodie bag. Okay. All right, and this big bad boy. If, yeah, if you have not been watching uh, Todd's videos on YouTube, I highly recommend it. He's got some describing his products and stuff like that, but also ones on like how you might wear them and things like that. Um, but a ton of videos, you know, breaking down the math on arrow velocities and things like that to answer all sorts of questions that are best answered by recreation or experimental archaeology. You know, how far does does waxing an arrow shaft help it penetrate through plywood or through uh, a wine-soaked gambeson? And then testing it, hands-on. Uh, it's really great. It's good fun. So this... <laughs> yeah. Forget what you call this. The twisty boy? I can't remember. <laughs> be really careful not to just let my excitement... It's almost as if, if I had a handy knife right here, I would probably have had a smarter way to unwrap this. Um, which, look at that. Okay, almost there. These are pretty nicely wrapped so that they don't get too, uh, get too mangled. So my love, my lovely camera person, Zoe, when I pulled her, I got this dagger. She said, well, I sort of like the other one. Maybe you should have got the other one. And I'm like, well, I've got good news for you. I got both. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a big, beefy rondelle dagger. Look at that. So this was, uh, you know, very, very handy for murdering people. Uh, all right as a tool, but not really meant for that. The profile of it is, is obviously for stabbing, and it is such a stout blade. Look at that compared to my fingernail. This is meant for punching right into armor, particularly male armor. So you can imagine the point of this catches into a link of mail and it's going to want to blow that link open. So it's basically like a heav heavily reinforced ice pick. Um, so yeah, that is, that is a stabby boy. Um, single edged, obviously. It's got some nice brass ornament reinforcing the rondelle and two different colors. Uh, this nice twisted wooden handle. Uh, the peen comes through with a nice ornamental um, uh, washer. I like these four rivets as well. Some marking here. It looks like that's probably from setting the rivet. Maybe the hammer struck it 
you know, this isn't a nobleman's dagger, so uh, nothing too concerning there. And if I'm, you know, concerned about that, I can always take a wire wheel to this and just sort of scuff the whole thing up. And then you won't see these couple scuffs. Very cool. I can definitely see this hanging from my belt. Eager to stab someone. Now, in this case, there weren't any natural scabbards left. Um, so I got the brown. Oh, that fits just perfectly. I know I realize they make several of these at a time, but it, these these sheaths fit well enough. I don't know if there's just a pile of them and they all fit that well, or if they're actually made for each knife. You really couldn't tell. So that fits really nicely, and then that would just hang like so. This one, if I recall correctly, it's more specifically 14th century, but I'll have to look it up uh, <laughs> on his site. I do trust his research because he seems really well researched. This one's got a nice brass shape on it. Cool, all right, and the very last one. Thank you, little guy. This one with a red sheet. Oh yes, look at how pretty that is. So brass and wood handle with a heart punched through. That looks quite nice. It's small, you know, this would be like an eating knife, potentially a utility knife. And then the sheath, I really like this. Mm -hmm. It's got a little heart in it. And I really like the way that the thonging's been punched through like this. And these were pretty unisex. So men and women would ornament their, uh, I mean, uh, all sorts of things with hearts and flowers and stuff. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't considered a childish or particularly feminine design. But that said, I will feel a bit like a jerk buying myself a little heart knife if I didn't also get one for my camera oh. one. <laughs> you can have the one that's unwrapped. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's gorgeous. That's really beautiful. Thank you so much. Be your camera woman any day. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I've been wanting to get a pair of these for a long time, and finally we have them. His and hers. So, Yay. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, you know, this one's staying wrapped, so yeah, know, it'll always be pristine. Then I can just steal yours if... Uh... Seems fair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, very cool. Uh, thank you to talk. Thank you for the free gift. Thank you, Zoe, for running the camera for me, and thanks for watching. I don't do a lot of unboxings. I just have like a random variety of uh, miscellaneous medieval videos, mostly around sort of martial arts stuff. But if you found this interesting and you would like more, I've got another pretty cool thing coming. So if you would like to see me unbox that, um, leave a comment or whatever, and then I'll know. Or if that was super dull, uh, you're probably not even here in the video still, so you can't leave a comment. <laughs>